This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. There are three accounting schemes available uh, for traders who pay VAT. They are the cash accounting scheme, the annual accounting scheme, and the flat rate scheme. And those are the three schemes that we're going to look at. And again, um, there are some parts of uh, this information which is pure rules, which again could turn up multiple choice questions. But there are some parts of these where um, you'd have to work out whether or not it's better for a client to be on the scheme or not uh, for VAT purposes. So there'd be some maths involved. And again, if that's the case, please make sure that you write all your answers down. All the calculations that have been through your um, calculator they need to go down on your um, exam paper so the examiner can see you've applied the rules. If there is a specific rule, as I've said before, and I will say again, write the rule down, apply it to your question and make sure that you um, show that clearly so the examiner can see what you've done. So we're going to look at cash accounting and annual accounting schemes first. They're both available to small businesses. So the cash accounting scheme enables a trader to account for output VAT on a cash basis. Um, disadvantages, obviously, you can only re uh, you can only recover the VAT when you make payments. You do get automatic bad relief, so that's good. That's kind of not so good. So basically, it's cash in, cash out. You account for the VAT on the sales when the cash is received. And when you make a payment, then you can record the um, input VAT. We have an illustration here that um, we can look at. Um, Violet gives its customers 30 day credit period, but pays most of its expenses in cash. Wants to know what conditions must be satisfied before it will be permitted to use the cash accounting scheme. So wants to know conditions and implications. So these, again, these are the rules that we can uh, apply in that situation. Um, taxable turnover must be less than 1.35 million. So it's definitely for small businesses. Um, you must be up to date. So the uh, surcharge liability notice can't have one of those in place. You've got to have what's known as a clean record. Um, the tax point changes to the date the payment is received because obviously it's on a cash basis. So all those rules that we looked at before about the basic tax point, whether it's um, an actual one before because an invoice has been issued or 14 days up to 14 days later because an invoice is issued, all that's out the window. Um, automatic bad debt relief because obviously you don't account for sales until somebody pays you. Um, cash for its expenses, so that's fine. Um, you must leave the scheme when your turnover reaches 1.6 million. So some slightly different rules um, and some um, conditions as well. I would say that was a condition. That's a condition. Uh, that's a implication, that's an implication, that's an implication, and that's a condition, if that helps. Um, because you could get one of those, I'd say, multiple choice questions. Now, the annual accounting scheme is what it says it is. You only make one VAT return a year. Okay, so the advantage is mainly administrative because you only have to do it once as opposed to four times. Um, easier to budget for cash flows. Okay, an illustration for that. Um, they want to know the advantages and when they can join. Um, they have a turnover of four point four hundred and I can't get my words out today. Four hundred and fifty thousand um, pounds. You can apply provided your turnover is not the same figures. Same figures. So those are conditions. Um, again, you must be up to date. 
so that's another condition so the implication is one return a year tax is due within two months of the end of the year um, now nine monthly payments are made on account each being 10 percent of the previous year's vat in months 4 to 12 of the accounting period with the balance payment with the return okay so that's an implication so the vat people don't want to wait 12 months for all the vat you have to make payments on account with that okay same conditions some more implications so let's have a look at the flat rate scheme again now this is optional much more simple because instead of having to work out the vat on your output and then the vat on the input vat you have a flat rate okay flat rate now flat rate will be given to you in the exam question you don't need to know those um so you can have ter expected taxable turnover no more than 230 so it's much much smaller um, than that so under the flat rate scheme this is how it works a business calculates the vat liability by simply applying the flat rate percentage which will be given by the revenue based on the trade sector to the total income inclusive of vat and any exempt supplies so it removes the need to calculate and record output and input that okay so they'll give you that okay this flat rate percentage is applied to the gross total income figure here I've got an example it will be given to you in the exam just make a note of that a new higher rate flat rate of 16.5 has been introduced for businesses with either no or only a small amount of purchases of goods students will not be expected to know where this rate is applicable but you will need to know how to use it and identify whether the flat rate scheme is worthwhile which is more most unlikely in these circumstances if a business makes total supplies of say a hundred thousand excluding that then it would normally have to account for output VAT of 20,000, being 20%. Then reduce it by every recoverable input VAT. So that's the normal way of doing things. If, however, the flat screen scheme was adopted, then irrespective of the amount of VAT of input, they would simply have to make a payment of £19,800 being the gross figure 100,000 plus 20 plus the tax at 16 and a half percent okay that's how it works now normally what you have to do with these is you have to do two calculations and this illustration really shows us how that works and you have to choose which one so snowdrop we've got two here snowdrop Annual sales of 120,000, all of which are standard rated and are to the general public. Standard rating expenses of 6,000, so that's our sales. These figures are inclusive of VAT. They include the VAT figure. And their percentage is 15%. See, that's given to you in the question. Using the normal basis of calculating for VAT, this is how it would look. So this is input output less input which is what needs to go on the return so the output vat is uh, 20,000 pounds and the input vat is a thousand pounds therefore the vat payable is 19. if they use the flat rate scheme then they will pay vat of 18,000 pounds being 120,000 times 15 percent there is a VAT saving of a thousand pounds in addition to a simplified administration. So none of their customs are VAT registered, so they don't need to do it. So for Snowdrop there, that would be really good. They don't have to issue invoices for because their clients aren't VAT related. So none of that, they only have to do um, simplified VAT, just a flat rate scheme of 15% and they're going to save VAT in the process. 
So that could be a kind of question, might be a section B kind of question um, that you might get asked on top of um, um, part of a, a larger question. Now, Primrose, annual sales, 96,000. 50% is standard rated, 50% is zero rated. All the sales are to a VAT registered businesses. Slightly different scenario here. Companies' standard rate expenses are 30,000 a year, inclusive of that. Relevant flat rate percent, only 6% given to you in the exam. Using the normal basis for calculating the VAT, they would pay VAT as follows. Now, we've only got 50% here because only 15% is standard rated. That's the output VAT of 8,000. The input VAT on the expenses is 5,000. So the VAT payable is 3. Now, if they use the flat rate scheme, then 96,000 times 6%, that would be their VAT. But it's not beneficial for them to join the scheme because they're paying more VAT, £2,760 more. And they've got to still keep doing the VAT invoices. So it, 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 isn't, it isn't worthwhile. So in, you may have to do a little question like that. Flat rate, normal, which one? You choose. Couple more topics in this chapter. Group VAT registration. Um, I'm not going to read through it because you're more than capable of reading through it. You basically two or more can register. It's treated for VAT purposes as though they're a single company. One of the group members must be appointed as the representative. They're responsible for filling in a return, one return for everybody. But they are all joint and severally liable for VAT. And then it talks about advantages and disadvantages. You don't need to know more than that. Um, multiple choice question. You can read through that. No calculation, no choosing. Just read through and make sure that you understand these rules and conditions. You don't need me to read them for you. You're more than capable of reading those for yourself. I'm not a storyteller. I'm a VAT teacher. <laughs> UK businesses trading overseas. Now the rules have changed because the UK is no longer a member of the EU. So there is no difference now between the VAT treatment of anybody um, in the EU or the rest of the world. Um, the following rules for TX UK, the following rules are relevant. OK, let's go through these. You might have to do a simple question with this. You may have to just do a, a little multiple choice with an explanation. So exports all overseas, zero rated. OK, imports. Import VAT is accounted for on the VAT return includes the date that the goods are imported under the postponed accounting scheme. You don't need to know about the postponed accounting scheme. The import VAT is declared on this VAT return as output VAT, but may be reclaimed as input VAT on the same return so long as the business makes taxable supplies. It's called the reverse charge self-supply procedure. <laughs> I like this one. I like this. I think this is good. This may seem like a pointless exercise, but if the UK business makes exempt supplies, it will not be able to recover the input VAT and hence will incur a VAT charge. Okay. So it is called the reverse charge or self-supply. So you account for the uh, import VAT as output VAT and then you claim it back as input VAT as though you'd bought it because you have. OK, so that's goods. So that's quite slightly different. Services outside the scope, if you're servicing uh, an overseas business, and then the self-supply reverse charge scheme applies for imports as above. OK, 
So example number eight, BW Limited, a UK VAT registered business that makes only taxable supplies. It acquired £12,000 of goods from its suppliers in the US and 20,000 of goods from its suppliers in Germany in the quarter to the 31st of March. In the same VAT quarter, it mailed sales of 50,000 to a VAT registered customer in France and 10,000 of goods to a business in Australia. What are the tax implications? So let's have a look at that. The export of goods to the, to the VAT registered customers in France and Australia is zero rated for the export. You notice how the answer separates the two. Export, this is the rule. Import, this is the rule. So rule, apply. Import of goods from both the suppliers in the US and in Germany under the self-supply scheme. Output VAT, we've calculated, so we've, we've said what the rule is, self-supply, then we've applied it to the US and to Germany, then we've done the calculation. So that's accounted for on its VAT quarter, but it can, makes wholly um, taxable supplies so they can recover the input VAT so no VAT cost will be incurred. So work it out. Import VAT is, um, is classed as out, output, output VAT, import VAT, and then the input VAT negates that. All right. There are several questions in the practice question section which you need to do. Now, one other thing with VAT, as I said, it's 10 marks in an exam. Registration and deregistration come up on a regular basis because they involve um, working out sums in order to work out at what point do we get to 85,000. Also, it includes dates and rules as to when you must notify and when you must then be registered by. So that could come up as a, a question um, in section B or section C. Um, the schemes, multiple choice, probably. Um, Deregistration, probably not. Um, working out, the other, the other major area, so you've got your registration is one area. The other major area is probably working out the VAT. So you could see maybe a section B question whereby you actually have some information regarding sales and regarding uh, purchases. Um, there's the, the scale charge for the cars, what you can and can't claim. So you've got bad debt issues, you've got petrol issues, you've got entertaining issues. Um, also, you might have discounts um, on your sales, so you have to split. So we've had those examples. So a section C question may be about VAT, 10 marks, whereby you've got to actually work out what the output and the input VAT is and what, when it's payable. Um, and then maybe some information about joining a scheme and what's benefits. And you'd have five multiple choice questions or drag and drop questions or little calculation questions where they brought all the VAT all together in one. Um, Normally, it's kind of scattered about, but as I say, the maximum is 10 marks. In the whole scheme of things, it is an important chapter because it's 10 marks and it could be the difference between 45 and 55. Um, but in the big scheme of things, it's not as important as adjusting profits, capital allowances, um, benefits in kind and capital gains. So put it on that scale i would put it below capital gains as important but don't miss it out read the chapter do the examples do the practice questions watch the recording the the lecture pause it when you need to go back and then do some extra revision using your bpp manual find the vat questions 
for each of the topics. The major ones are the registration and working out the VAT. Okay, those are the two ones where you're going to have to do some calculations. Okay, but VAT, it's an important topic, but probably further down the important list. Practice the questions and go for it.